Uh, this past episode of Insecure was really uh, a it was bitch. it a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Sis. We see Molly and, and Issa finally get it in. Yeah, bound to happen. God damn. It was about time, right? Yep. Um, couple things. Mm-hmm. I was expecting Lawrence to be at the block party. No, that is a his ex girl and his his two of his ex girls are there. Well, that's, I didn't know that him and kind of a no we didn't know that zone. him and Condola we didn't. broke up. So going into this, I, I expected Lawrence to be there for support, and I also was heavy on the side of where I thought Lawrence. Why am I so more passionate about this than the last dance? Go ahead, that's not true. Um, <laughs> I love the last dance, but this is really good. Lawrence was supposed to pull up, and I thought that Lawrence was on the side of like, yo, like I thought he wanted Issa back, kind of vibes. Because they were doing the kiki and on the Instagram kind of thing. Mm. So I thought maybe that was like still a backdoor option. Okay. So I figured with that being a backdoor option, well, then like a place to present yourself would be at the block party. At the block party. But Nathan but was at the block party. Doesn't matter. Lawrence, the only, uh, Nathan was there, but I expected Lawrence to be there. Uh-huh. But I realized that, that him and Condola broke up. But then again, we didn't know where the fuck Condola was either. Yeah, Condola kind of ghosted um, after corn. the initial. I don't. I don't think she's corny. I think it was. It's a tough spot, right? Like it is very tough. You're friends My with bad. this this girl, and you realize that she used to date the guy that you're with right now. She dated him for five years. There's history there, like you said, the jokes. Yeah, that's awkward. That's tough. All that stuff like that. Yeah, and it's, she's not weird. My bad, Canola. You're not. And weird. then the, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that shit either. You're and right. then the communication is tough because like. Um, Condola and Issa are talking about Lawrence, and then Lawrence is like, "You guys are joking about me. Please don't joke about me." Yeah, it was There's weird. just so many eggshells weird, that weird, everybody weird. has to walk on, so it's a tough spot. Molly's making an effort, a little bit of an effort to to get close to Issa, and then yes. she listens to Andrew, who's like, you know, she worked really hard, yeah, so she doesn't have a lot of time to really give you all the attention you really want. And then Molly starts to be a little bit more understanding, gets her some chicken wings. Listen, you can fix a lot of problems with chicken wings. A lot of problems. <laughs> a lot of problems with chicken wings. That's a fact. If if you came over to me with a bucket of wings, I'd be like, Yo, what's up, my nigga? We exactly. All, like it's all, it's all good. I don't even know what I was mad at. So there was a scene before the block party in which Andrew was talking to Molly and basically mm-hmm. like encouraging her to um pull up to the block party. Yes. And as a boyfriend, that's like your that's that's your role. That's your line. That's you're supposed to be supportive and also supposed to be level-headed and help her, like, guide her to, like, you know, better decisions. That's what you do as a partner. Mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break Andrew and Molly up real quick. There's They have bad communication, though. Who? Andrew and Molly. Because you're telling me that if I'm having conversations with you about you should be at the block party, at no point am I going to tell you, like, we should also go because I, like, I, I want to go see Vince Staples, who I hooked up to be there or you know what I'm saying like, like him not mentioning that to Molly because we're going to get into this is sus to me just from a boyfriend perspective that's not part of your everyday conversation I think he should have definitely he told her have, about he it have told her about that he should have been transparent about that but that there's not an there's no issue there there's, there, there doesn't, that's not the big issue I know it's not I believe and honestly Andrew hasn't done anything to show us that his motives are anything other than you know up on the up and up right right so I really do believe that Andrew in his head thought this is just how things should be. You, I'm with you. You have a friend that has an issue. I have a way that I can help. I'm going to hold you guys it's, down. It's, 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 it's what happens, right? It's your friend and I'm, I'm like, I got you. Because it's I've. Like, that's you. That's you. And that's you. And I've, all, and I've thought the same way as Andrew in relationships. Like if you have a friend, a family member, and I can help. I'm going to help. I got you. And a lot of times, like, you don't even have to, like, boast and brag about what you did to help. I did this to help. I did that to help. Yeah. Not. Nah, it's just standard operating procedure, right? So I've, I, so that's why, like, I'm, I know Andrew should have communicated that to Molly, but I can understand where Andrew probably felt like, I'm helping my girl because I'm exactly. helping my friend. First of all, let's divide the couch right now. What side are you on, Molly or Issa? I got after after the blow up. I gotta be. I gotta be on Issa's side. I'm on Team Issa as well, and I, I just think that Molly's up until then. I was on Molly's side. Up until then, I was on Molly's side too. But Molly, well, like Scotty, when Molly's true colors came out, well, I was she, just about to do what that she's too. Upset about like Molly's nah, pip. Yeah. MJ. I was waiting for you to finish talking. I could. <laughs> I should have cut your bitch ass off. <laughs> Molly is pipping. Yeah. Issa's MJ. Yeah. Um. Molly. Came, her her motives came out, and so. They left. What do you think her motives were? Because I don't think I she. I think there was a lack of motive. I don't think she wanted 
Issa to fail. She didn't want Issa to fail, but to her, I think it was like, if you're, if we're not good, I don't owe you anything. Yes. That. So I don't even think it was a more of a motive. I think it's more of a stand, a stand, a stance. Her stance was, yo, we're not good. I don't owe you shit. That's a shitty stance. It's if not. We have, it's a shitty stance. If we have, if, it's a, it's a shitty it's a shitty stance, up until some some big shit happens. Because you could have a friend that you might not be on good. Like let's say for example, we were on bad terms, and then you hit me up like, "Yo, Trev, it's an emergency. Like I need you over here quick." Dropping everything, doing what I got to do to help out. I'm not, in my head, like, our issues are not as big as this event. Like, your issues are not as big as this block party. This These episodes have been about the value of friendship, right? I like, think these episodes, and, I mean, it's a much needed, if this conversation happens, like, two episodes ago, I don't think it gets as drastic as no, it does, it does. but there was, really there was some mud slinging. Yeah, it was nasty. It was very nasty. Molly's issue initially was, yo, I'm not going to put pressure on my new boyfriend um, to help you out because I don't want to jeopardize our relationship. I want to do things differently. At that point, we respected it, I think. I think we were... Yeah, to a certain extent, extent, yes. We respected it. Understood it. When it came out, her issue was... when, When Issa got the result that Issa got was she went through Nathan... She leveraged Nathan to use his relationship and his um, his resources with Andrew. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like Molly, that doesn't affect you. It does. I it does um, because I think Molly didn't want Andrew involved because of how Issa didn't take Molly and Andrew seriously. Issa didn't take Molly seriously. So in Molly's mind, it's like if you're not gonna. If you're not going to encourage me to get to know this guy better, if you're not going to encourage me to have something solid with this guy, if you think that I just I just never want to be happy because that's what he used to tell us, like you never want to be happy, then just stay out of our fucking business. Like stay out of Andrew and Molly business. So I think that's why she develops that stance of you don't you don't, you think I ain't shit in relationships. You think I don't want to be happy. So what the fuck do you need from this nigga that I'm happy with? I think Molly has a right to feel the way she feels. It's just that you cannot, this is a whole different situation. This is code red. This is block party happens or doesn't happen. Yeah. So at, in that situation, like you just got to do what you got to do because that's your homegirl. You guys got history. If you want to go back to being upset afterwards, go back to being upset afterwards, have a conversation, never speak to her again, do whatever there's the fuck you got to do, right? But in this situation, like you got to put that aside. And I mean, she didn't fuck your man. She didn't kill your dog. She didn't right. slash your tires. It's costing... No one anything. It but that's but that's the thing. Like we have these egos and we build them up so big inside of us and any little thing could just like pop it. Like we're yeah. so inflated, anything can pop it. And that's what Molly was. Like she was so inflated with this ego of, Yes, yeah, she's my friend, but she I don't like the way she's moving. She's talking to Lawrence. She's talking to to Nathan. Like like what the fuck is she doing? And she's saying, I can't keep a relationship and I can't be happy it's- in a relationship. To me, I think in the last couple of years, I've realized that like the people who are in your close circle and the people who you can find in should be people that you want the best for and want the best for you. Mm-hmm. Through it all, we are friends because we want to see each other grow and achieve the greatest um, level that we can achieve within our within our our own lives. Mm-hmm. And so, like. That's the bigger picture. So in these situations, it's like I don't think they're giving each other a fair chance at like seeing the best in you. I, I'm not giving Molly a fair chance at seeing the fact that like yo, she's she's trying with this new guy, and they've been talking for a couple of months now. Oh, and, and now they're official. This might be different, and I'm not seeing the best. All I'm saying is this is how you give it up, and this is how you always giving it up, and I'm not pushing you to greater. On uh on Issa's side though, Molly wasn't exactly as forthcoming as she needed to be with her feelings about Andrew. She was kind of playing it cool with Issa. She kind of wasn't letting Issa know that she felt so strongly about Andrew. Right, right. So that's probably why Issa was just like, you're just saying the same shit you say to me about every other nigga. So, right. so why So why am I going to take it seriously? This is very layered. It's layered. And and and, Lisa, and Issa ain't no saint. They're, I, like I said, They're they have, both wrong. they've both but equally in this situation, been Molly, bad friends. I think Molly just moved real selfish-like. Um, I don't think, because what 
pushed her to confront Issa wasn't even the issue that she should be confronting her about, I think. I think the issue should be talking about the lack of communication between them as friends or the underlying beef. But it's, it's not about like, all right, cool. Like, yo, my nigga held you down. I told you no, but if her issue was is going to blow back on her and mess up her relationship, it did not. It will not. It did not because... Issa leveraged Nathan. Yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty though. Like you always, you always want everybody to be as transparent with you as possible. Uh, so I get, so I get why Miley would be upset about that. I do get Molly from that point because it's like Issa still. Molly said no. I, God, that's weird. Yeah, I Molly said from that it's like if it's like if you ask your mom for something, then go ask your dad for it. Yeah, and then your dad says yes. They're both wrong. Mom comes home, you got a dog. This is real life for me. Mom comes home, you got a dog. <laughs> Mom's upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom, mom's not happy. Mom's upset. Um, yes. I get it. I get it. Uh, where do we go from here? Do Issa and Molly remain friends? Is this salvageable? I think it is. When there's history, I think it is. I don't think we see it be salvaged this season, though. I think we got to wait for season five <sighs> to see the um, the reconciliation. What do we want happening? What do we want, what do we want from out of Insecure right now? What do we want? Uh, we just want them to deep dive. Like, deep dive more into... How these issues started. I really do. Did you see the funniest part of the episode was was Kelly, Kelly. and she kept the English accent Kelly. Up the entire Kelly, time. Kelly is what homeboy. Kelly is great. And then when they said that somebody Kelly's looked great. like they had a gun in their pocket, he was she was like, "Let's get out of here." He was like, Nigga, I'm, from Ingle, "I'm from Philly. <laughs> Nigga, I'm from Philly. Let's go." Right. She killed. She killed. Kelly killed.